very best care I've ever gotten has been in this building. Currently, more than 1,100 health centers provide services to over 20 million patients across the nation. The Health Resources and Services Administration has provided the funding to health centers to improve health and achieve health equity through access to quality services, a skilled health workforce, and innovative programs. Now, the question is, how do health centers help people? The health center program focuses on helping people who might not otherwise have a place to get health care. Anyone who walks through the doors of a health center clinic can get served. We surveyed people across the country and we asked them whether they have a place where they usually go to get health care when they're sick, such as a doctor's office or a health center or some other place. In the U.S. in general, about 85% of people say they have a place they usually go to get health care. But among people who visit health centers, an even higher number, 95%, say they have a usual source of care. So that tells us that health center patients are highly likely to be able to find a reliable place to get their primary care services. Good afternoon, Carol. So we know that health center patients have good access to health care. How can we tell if they're happy with that health care? We also ask people across the country whether they're satisfied with the health care they get. Health center patients do seem to be very happy with their health care. This facility is based on wellness. Their vested interest is in seeing patients stay well and get well. I'm a poverty patient, I'm a medical assistance patient, and I've got the best doctor I ever had. Among Americans in general, about 40% of patients are satisfied with their doctor's office hours. But among patients in health centers, that number is much higher, and we find that over 95% of people are happy with health center office hours. Health centers often stay open in the evenings or on weekends to accommodate people's busy schedules. And that's certainly one reason to explain why people are happy with the care they get at health centers. I think that the timing of that snack is going to be important to help you kind of get over how you feel because like I said, 90s to 100s, those numbers aren't alarming to me at all. However, What are health centers doing to address obesity across the country? Overweight and obesity is a growing problem nationwide, and almost 70% of people in this country are now considered overweight or obese. Health centers are doing their part to address this issue, and they often provide services that go beyond the four walls of their actual clinics. For instance, one health center in New Mexico is partnering with restaurants and grocery stores to highlight healthy food options on restaurant menus and store displays, so people can have more information about healthy diet choices. Another health center in Hawaii is working with local farmers to organize farmers markets where people can buy fresh fruits and vegetables. What sort of health conditions does obesity lead to? Overweight and obesity lead to several conditions we see in our health centers, like high blood pressure and diabetes. Our national study of health center patients found that about one third of our patients have chronic high blood pressure. Without appropriate management and care, this proportion will continue to grow. High blood pressure is a particularly dangerous condition because it does not show early symptoms and has serious consequences if not addressed. That's why high blood pressure is often referred to as the silent killer. And a lot of times, if you don't see you know, physical manifestation of this chronic disease, you're in denial. I can walk, I can see, I haven't had a stroke. What sort of management and care strategies help control hypertension? In addition to medication, small behavior changes like changing your diet, decreasing your salt intake, increasing your exercise, and reducing your alcohol intake are ways to control high blood pressure. These are all strategies that we promote in our health centers. With proper management and control, people with high blood pressure can avoid unnecessary visits to the emergency departments and avoid hospitalizations. I feel like, you know, if I'm diligent, if I lose 30, 40 pounds, maybe I can reduce some of the medications that I take, which is a lot. Obesity is also strongly linked to diabetes, which is a serious disease that affects your blood sugar levels. If the sugar levels are not controlled properly, it can lead to many serious complications, like heart disease, blindness, or kidney failure. 
Some health centers, like one in Massachusetts, are providing special services for people with diabetes, including a special clinic, health education, and assigning caseworkers to help them manage their illness. They also work directly in neighborhoods where they do health screenings and outreach to promote healthy eating and exercise to help stop diabetes from developing in the first place and to start monitoring and treating it early on if it does. In our national study of health center patients, we found that monitoring patients with diabetes, like eye exams, foot exams, and checking blood sugar levels is a good strategy to keep them out of the hospital and emergency departments. We found that over 80% of diabetic patients in our study did not have a hospitalization or ED visit in the preceding two years. What are the benefits of routine cancer screening and early detection of cancer? I am a breast cancer survivor of five years. I went through chemotherapy twice. This is my third time going through chemotherapy here at Lincoln Community Health Center. Cancer mortality has decreased over the past two decades for our country as a whole. A good proportion of the success can be attributed to routine cancer screening and early detection. Additionally, screening tests or early cancer detection can impact quality as well as quantity of life. Routine screening and early cancer detection provide better opportunities for patients to obtain more effective treatment with fewer side effects. Patients whose cancers are found early and treated in a timely manner are more likely to survive these cancers than are those whose cancers are not found until symptoms appear. As a whole, the nation has made strides in cancer mortality as a result of effective cancer screening. Are there segments of the U.S. population that have not shared in this success? Although cancer mortality has decreased over the past two decades, racial and ethnic disparities continue to persist. Racial and ethnic minorities have increased cancer incidence, greater late-stage diagnoses, and poor cancer survival. Large-scale studies have shown that these cancer disparities are a result of poor clinical interactions. For instance, some studies have shown that some doctors recommend cancer screenings less with ethnic minority patients. Other studies have shown that white patients receive more aggressive therapy than their racial and ethnic counterparts for lung, prostate, and colorectal cancers. A key finding from our recent national study of health center patients is that there were no racial and ethnic differences in screening for breast, colon, and rectal cancers. And in some instances, cancer screening rates of health center patients was higher than the national average. It's comforting to know that findings support that health centers are meeting their mission of providing quality health care to anyone that walks through their doors. The Health Center Program, our mission to improve health and achieve health equity through access to quality services, a skilled health workforce, and innovative programs. We provide opportunities for patients to obtain preventative care as well as effective treatment of chronic conditions. Health centers, improving health and promoting health equity through access to quality health care services. <laughs>